Mason Pettits reflects on his life, explaining that he originally had aspirations of becoming a lawyer, but decided to drop out of law school after only one year. The reason for his change of heart stemmed from a desire to escape a conventional, stereotypical life. Instead, he enlisted in the U.S. Army, where he excelled in his training and earned a place in the Special Forces. It was during this time that he fell deeply in love with his wife, Jenny, and together they had a daughter, Casey. However, tragedy struck during a mission in Paldonia, South America, where his team was tasked with assassinating the brutal dictator of Juan Venegas. The mission went horribly wrong, leading to the death of Mason's comrades and Mason himself was critically injured. This traumatic experience forced him to return home, where he eventually decided to resume his legal career, hoping to leave his past behind. Several years have passed and Mason and Jenny's once passionate relationship has settled into a monotonous routine typical of suburban life. Just when Mason begins to feel trapped in this unfulfilling existence, he receives a visit from an old acquaintance, Sebastian Earl, who was once his superior in the army and now runs a private security firm called CDI, Contract Defense Initiatives. Sebastian presents Mason with a tempting offer, a high-paying job that involves protecting a journalist who is set to travel to Paldonia to interview Venegas. Despite Mason's reservations, primarily because he holds Venegas responsible for the deaths of his teammates, he is persuaded by Sebastian's offer of $20,000 for the mission. Before heading out, Mason conducts research on Claire Wellington, Allison Bree, the journalist he is hired to protect. Claire is a renowned reporter whose reputation was severely tarnished after she was involved in a fact-checking scandal, making this assignment her chance at redemption. As Mason prepares for the mission, tensions rise at home. Jenny and Mason argue and it becomes clear their relationship is strained. In the heat of the argument, Mason agrees to move out of the house, but his decision to take on the dangerous mission further fuels Jenny's anger. She expresses her fear of losing him again, but despite her protests, Mason leaves. He meets up with Claire and together they travel to Paldonia, where Claire shares that Venegas has only just agreed to this interview, a pivotal moment that could salvage her career. Upon their arrival, Venegas personally picks up Claire and Mason from the airport. Claire and Venegas quickly bond over a mutual connection. Ellie, Claire's college roommate who introduced them. Venegas presents a picture of himself as a leader who has brought stability to his country, though Mason notices that the people of the capital seem to harbor resentment toward him. On the way to Venegas' estate, their convoy is ambushed by militants, leading to a fierce battle that leaves all of Venegas' security detail dead. Mason springs into action, skillfully eliminating the attackers and saving both Claire and Venegas. In the aftermath, Venegas thanks Mason, explaining that the attack was part of a coup attempt. Although Mason is eager to leave the country immediately, Claire is determined to stay, believing the developing story is too important to walk away from. Meanwhile, Colonel Jan Kohorst, a high-ranking military official, receives troubling news that all his men have been killed in the ambush. As Mason, Claire, and Venegas make their way through the dense jungle, Mason contacts Sebastian, who directs them to a clearing where they can be extracted. During their journey, Venegas contacts his nephew George Vasquez and discovers that George was responsible for orchestrating the assassination attempt in an effort to seize power and install himself as president. Though Claire is upset at the idea of abandoning such a promising story, Mason insists they leave, knowing the danger they face. While awaiting extraction in the jungle, Mason and Claire are ambushed once again, this time by mercenaries. A tense chase ensues through the wilderness, with Mason managing to kill most of their attackers. Just when things seem dire, Venegas reappears, saving Mason and Claire from a final assailant. The group barely escapes with their lives, but it's clear the danger is far from over. In a separate confrontation, Georgie meets with Kohorst to discuss the failed assassination attempt. Kohorst, acting on behalf of powerful clients, expresses frustration over Venegas' survival and warns George that failure to eliminate his uncle will have severe consequences. The stakes are high and the power struggle is far from over. As Mason reflects on the events, he tells Claire that this mission will be his last, citing his age and the toll that has taken on his body. He opens up about his personal struggles, admitting that his separation from Jenny and his dissatisfaction with his legal career have left him questioning the direction of his life. For Mason, this mission has become more than just a job. It is a turning point that will force him to confront the choices he has made and the future he wants to pursue. Venegas takes Mason and Claire to a remote village in Paldonia a place where Venegas spent his childhood and where the locals still hold him in high regard. The village is a sharp contrast to the chaotic world of politics and conflict that Venegas now navigates, and its residents view him as a hero who has fought to protect their way of life. Claire takes this opportunity to conduct and film her long-awaited interview with Venegas. During the conversation, Venegas opens up about the true nature of his presidency, 
admitting that it has long been backed by foreign powers with vested interests in Paldonia's abundant natural metal resources. These outside forces initially supported his leadership because they believed they could exploit the country's wealth, but their support dwindled when Venegas began pushing for Paldonian independence and prioritizing the well-being of his people over foreign interests. After the interview, tensions shift in a personal direction. Back in their shared bedroom, Claire attempts to seduce Mason, hoping to turn their professional relationship into something more intimate. However, Mason, loyal to his wife despite their separation, rejects Claire's advances. Feeling conflicted, Mason contacts Sebastian to try and understand the bigger picture of the mission he has been drawn into. It is during this conversation that Mason learns the shocking truth. His real mission was never about protecting Claire or Venegas. Instead, Sebastian reveals that Mason had been sent to assassinate Venegas, a plan that George Venegas' own nephew had orchestrated to secure control of the country. The situation becomes even more complicated when Sebastian explains that a group of South Africans, led by the ruthless Cohorst, is intent on seizing control of Paldonia's valuable metal resources. Before Mason has time to process this information, Cohorst and his men arrive at the village, forcing Mason, Claire, and Venegas to flee for their lives. Their only escape is on horseback, leading to a high-stakes chase through the rugged terrain. During the chaos, Mason and Venegas manage to break away, but Claire is captured by Cohorst's forces. As Mason and Venegas regroup, Venegas begins to open up to Mason, revealing even more about the dark secrets surrounding his presidency. He admits that he was aware of George's plot to assassinate him, and that he also knew about Mason's original mission to kill him during the army operation years ago. Venegas drops another bombshell. It wasn't his men who killed Mason's comrades. Instead, it was a result of friendly fire from competing contractors, hired by opposing factions looking to control the outcome of the mission. Venegas also reveals that he has been manipulating the political landscape for years by secretly funding the opposition party's leader and paying rebels as part of a propaganda campaign designed to boost Paldonian nationalism. Desperate to rescue Claire, Messon reaches out to Sebastian for help. Sebastian agrees to broker a trade with the South Africans for Claire's safe return. However, just as the deal is about to go through and Venegas is about to be handed over, the situation takes an unexpected turn. A mob of angry Paldonian citizens, outraged by the foreign presence in their country, arrives on the scene and launches an attack on the mercenaries. Amid the chaos, Mason, Venegas, and Claire take advantage of the distraction to sneak into the presidential palace. Claire, ever the journalist, begins live-streaming the event on her phone, determined to broadcast the truth to the world. Inside the palace, Venegas and George finally come face to face and, in a moment of unexpected reconciliation, agree to put their differences aside. However, their peace is short-lived when General Martinez bursts into the room and shoots Venegas. Luckily, Venegas is unharmed and in the ensuing struggle, he kills Martinez. Tragically, George is caught in the crossfire and dies from a stray bullet, leaving Venegas to mourn the loss of his nephew. As the battle rages on outside, the Paldonian military, originally aligned with the South African mercenaries, is moved by Venegas' passionate speech. Venegas calls on the soldiers to join him in defending their country, and his words resonate with them, sparking a change in loyalty. The soldiers turn on the mercenaries and a fierce firefight breaks out. Meanwhile, Claire continues to film everything, capturing the dramatic turn of events on camera. In the midst of the chaos, Mason faces off against Cohorst in brutal hand-to-hand -hand fight. During their struggle, Cohorst reveals that he was the one responsible for killing Mason's team all those years ago. Just as Cohorst gains the upper hand, Claire intervenes, knocking him unconscious and saving Mason's life. With Cohorst incapacitated, Mason finishes off the remaining mercenaries. At that moment, Sebastian arrives with reinforcements, and together with the Paldonian military, he managed to drive out the South Africans for good. The battle is over, but the aftermath of the conflict is just beginning to unfold. News outlets around the world pick up Claire's footage, reporting on the heroic efforts of the Paldonian people and the exposure of foreign exploitation. In the following weeks, Venegas announces that he is stepping down as president, and he makes a historic promise that Paldonia will hold free elections for the first time in its history. He also pledges to invest heavily in the country's health and education systems, ensuring a brighter future for the Paldonian people. Mason, having completed his mission, returns home to Jenny and Casey. The experience has given him a new perspective on life, and he is determined to reconnect with his family. To his surprise, Mason discovers that Venegas has left him a gift, $5 million, a token of gratitude for saving his life. With newfound purpose and financial security, Mason decides to focus on what truly matters spending time with his family and building a better future for them. Thanks for watching, everyone. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more awesome content like this. I'd love to hear your thoughts, so feel free to drop a comment below 
And if you think someone else might enjoy this, go ahead and share it with your friends. Your support helps the channel grow, and I really appreciate it. Stay tuned for more, and I'll catch you in the next one.